Hi, welcome back to the Gap Search channel. My name is Gabby and I'm really excited about this video because this is not about me. It's about Martin's DAC that he built. It's a DIY DAC and it is built on the Gapster TD1 DAC and also a lot of EN Canada parts. It's one of the few that I've seen already because the Gapster TD1 it's just been released only about a couple months ago and people are just starting to build those things. So I haven't, I'm just starting to see some actually uh, fully built uh, DACs that are in some impressions about others. So I've had about three or four people so far message me say, hey, I, I built your DAC and and it's running and it's uh, I really love the sound and they wrote some really nice things about it and I just asked uh, Martin if he could send me a few pictures about his system and if he don't he doesn't mind me uh, putting those pictures in my video he actually sent me a whole uh, list of uh, a whole text about it sent me a whole bunch of pictures and I thought might as well just do a full video about it and tell you what he said to me in his email. Uh, Martin talks quite a bit about the sound and I think a lot of us are itching to know, including myself, on what other people think about the Gapster TD1 DAC in combination with Ian Canada's streamer. Because uh, let's not forget, it's not about one thing here. This is a whole combination of different parts, different power supplies and different things that actually get you to get to that sound. So let's see what he says. So Martin sent me a, quite a big paragraph just talking about the sound. I'm just going to go through the highlights. If you like, freeze the screen. There are two parts of it and, uh, and, and you can read it yourself. I will also add it in the description of this video. So this is some of the highlights. He said the sound is very natural and feel effortless. It is well balanced across the whole spectrum with a wide sound stage and great instrument separation. The detail retrieval is vivid where in certain recordings I can now hear the singer smallest voice tremors and breathing. Same for wind instruments where I can hear the air flowing through the instrument. The decay is quite good, electric guitar, harmonics and distortion are present and real, drums are what live drums should sound like. Very nice. Now for the real test, my usual go-to instrument to pay attention to are piano, stand-up bass and voices. If a system can reproduce those well, you are in for a treat. This DAC does very well reproducing those sounds, which are usually rarely done right. And now for the second part, he also talks about a few things. I'm going to put it on the screen as well. You can freeze it and read it yourself, or you can listen to me. I'm just going to say the highlights. This is an affordable and fun learning project where one can achieve amazing results. To me, it feels like when you walk into a room and the space makes you feel welcomed, relaxed, and at ease. This deck feels like it belongs in my room. Again, I'll put the full uh, thing that Martin wrote in the description as well. And no, I did not bribe Martin or pay him anything. I really don't know him anywhere. That's the first time I hear from him. And uh, so it was kind of nice. And since then, I've actually had a few people approach me and they've actually finished building their DACs and they seem to be very happy with the sound. So I'm hoping that slowly, slowly, I'll uh, maybe if you guys would like, wouldn't mind sharing your experiences and sending me a few pictures and a couple notes, I wouldn't mind sharing them with everybody else, just so we all experience uh, what's the sound like. Feel free to post on forums whether you like it or hate it, just so keep saying, let us know how you feel and how you like the TD1. So let's start with uh, how we actually put it, uh, start the idea and putting it together. He said, my one requirement was that the streamer DAC needed to fit in one enclosure fit in my stereo rack and be visually pleasing. I set up to find and purchase the largest amp enclosure for parts that would fit my rack. An old Harman Kardon for $20 fits the bill nicely. I stripped the old amp down to the enclosure and used it for my project. He used a computer uh, RPI 4B, basically the Raspberry Pi 4B. 
and he has three toroidal transformers feeding a linear pi UC conditioner for 5 volt, plus 5 volt, 0 and minus 5 volt, and the 3.2 volt UC pure ultra capacitors. So this uh, so three toroidal transformers feeding all these uh, parts. And uh, one I5 power supply feeding the 15 volt. Now the other parts are that are actually being powered for by those three transformers. And, uh, so we've got, these are parts from Ian Canada. You can get them from iancanada.ca. Uh, these are Station Pi Pro, Receiver Pi Pro, Monitor Pi Pro, FIFO Q7, SC Pure Clocks, an I2S PCM board, and of course the Gapster TD1. You can get the Gapster TD1 from my website, uh, gapster.ca. I'm going to put a list of all these in the description below, so if you don't have to, you know, grab any pens and papers here. So all, the, all these parts will be listed in the description. Then he carries on and he says, as in life, one has to compromise in order to meet requirements. Space quickly became a problem, therefore feeding the TD1 15 volt with anything else but an i5 power supply was impossible. This was not much of a concern as I put priority on the 5 clocks to have the most stable power using ultra capacitors. I paid particular attention to reduce noise by shielding the Raspberry Pi, the toroidal transformers as well, and AC wires. I took advantage of an unused linear Pi control output to feed a mechanical relay linked to the i5 power supply and an independent power switch. This setup allows me to power all the boards from the flip with just a flip switch. If you'd like to ask Martin some questions, just can put some in the comments below. Just be kind. Uh, Martin was very gracious to actually show us what his system and sharing with us. Not everybody does that. It's quite scary to actually put yourself out there. And uh, it's quite sad sometimes our community, they like to cut each other down instead of powering each other up. I believe in basically being sharing and encouraging each other. Yes, you can maybe do a little comment if you see something, maybe that will help positively, but try to be nice and think about it in a positive way and let's all help each other and make each other better. So yeah, if you have any comments, just put them in the link below. Hopefully, maybe Martin will chime in, could answer your questions. Looks like Martin is using a Dynaco, uh, like a new iteration of a Dynaco amplifier. And you also have a Prima Luna amplifier there. He's got some nice, I believe they're open baffle speakers. I can't tell exactly, but they seem like uh, open baffle speakers to me. I love how he repurposed the enclosure and made it nice. So just, he didn't have to go and buy the fancy enclosure and spent too much money so he kept things at a good budget and spent that money on upgrading for example the clocks and the power supply and all that kind of stuff. Now notice on the back he's using uh, three fuses here for the three transformers so this is very great safety ideas. If you have built the Gapster TD1 and uh, tried it and uh, I would like to hear from you uh, send me a like, quick email what you think about it doesn't matter you don't have to say good things just tell me what you think about it uh, honestly just like to hear what people think about it and how it sounded. Uh, in their system. Also, what other systems they had before uh, to, com to compare to. Just give me an idea uh, what they're, where they're coming from and all that. I have since receiving this email from Martin, I received a couple other messages and so far the vibe is positive and uh, people seem to be uh, are liking the sound. So this is great and makes me feel very happy about it. There's a couple people struggling. They sent me emails. Somehow they either messed up the soldering or they didn't hook it up. So they switched the five volt, put it in reverse uh, because it's if you flip like the voltages, the plus five, put it in the reverse, you're gonna probably destroy your OPA 861 uh, chip, which is hard to replace, by the way, unless you have quite a bit of equipment or you could destroy, if you flip the 15 volt, you can destroy actually your, your TDA chip and also ultimately you can also destroy your FIFO Q7 parts of it as well. So just be careful before you can read all the 
tips and tricks how to connect the DAC before you connect it, do some tests maybe before you connect it to anything, just to see. I made a couple of videos about that, so read them all, watch them all, I mean, and, uh, and just double check everything, especially have a good understanding how to connect the plus five, zero and minus five. And one of the videos I put at the end of it, uh, I'll put a link of it in the description below, how to actually uh, hook up the power to it. I'm actually going to put that video in the corner up here just to be on the safe side. And on this side, I'm going to put actually where is the uh, uh, Gapster TD1 DAC. And just for people who have no idea what I'm talking about. I'll be a speaker in the middle if you feel like subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you again in another video. Take care.